Units currently follow their paths by moving in a straight line from one waypoint to the next. In this episode, we'll be adding in smoothing to hopefully make the paths seem more natural. So given an array of points defining a path, we'll start by imagining lines going from each point towards the previous point in the path. The length of these lines is controlled by a variable called turn distance. And at the end of each of these lines, we create a perpendicular line called the turn boundary. The one exception is for the final point in the path where we make the boundary line pass through the point itself. Now, to follow the path, our unit will move from the start point straight towards the next point. As soon as the unit passes the turn boundary, however, it will start rotating towards the next point, and so on. Once the unit passes the final turn boundary, which we can think of instead as the finish line, the path is complete. We can obviously then control the smoothness of the path by adjusting the unit's turn speed. We're going to start off by coding a class that can create a line given a point on that line, as well as a point perpendicular to the line. Alright, so in Unity, I'm going to create a new c -sharp script called line. And opening this up, I'm going to turn it into a public struct. And we're going to define our line with two variables, a float for the gradient and a float for the y-intercept. We'll then also want to know the gradient of the perpendicular line, so I'll make a variable for that as well, gradient perpendicular. And then we can create our constructor public line taking in a vector2 for a point on the line and a vector2 for a point perpendicular to the line. Okay, so to start off we can calculate the gradient perpendicular. So let's say float delta x is equal to point on line dot x minus the perpendicular point dot x and similarly, delta y is equal to point on line dot y minus the perpendicular point dot y. All right, the perpendicular gradient is then simply delta y over delta x. Of course, if the line is uh, vertical, then delta x is going to be zero, and this is going to be an invalid operation. So what we want to do in that case is just set the gradient to some high value so that for our purposes it can be considered perfectly straight since we don't really care too much about accuracy here. So at the top of the line struct I'll just create a constant float. You can call this vertical line gradient and we can set this to something like 10 to the power 5 which is of course 100,000. So we now handle this case if delta x is equal to 0 then our perpendicular gradient is equal to vertical line gradient. Otherwise, we set it with rise of a run. So that's our perpendicular gradient. We now want to calculate the gradient of our actual line. So you're probably aware that the gradient of a line multiplied by the gradient of a line perpendicular to it is going to equal negative one. So we can calculate our gradient by negative 1 divided by the perpendicular gradient. Unless, of course, this variable is equal to 0, in which case we're going to want to make use of our vertical line gradient again. So we say if the gradient perpendicular is equal to 0, then our gradient is equal to vertical line gradient. Otherwise, we set it with this calculation. All right, we then want to calculate our y-intercept. So that's easy enough. If we consider our line in the form y equals mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept, we just need to rearrange this to solve for c equals y minus mx. So typing this out, we get y-intercept is equal to point on line dot y minus our gradient multiplied by point on line dot x. Now, remember that the whole point of this line struct is to figure out whether or not the unit has passed a turn boundary. 
So we're going to want some method returning a bool. I'll call this get side. It's going to take in a vector to point or p for short. It's going to return true if the given point p is on one side of the line defined by gradient and y-intercept, and false if it's on the other side. So, in order to do this calculation, we're going to need two points on our line. So, up here, I'll create vector2 point on line underscore 1 and point on line underscore 2. So we already have one point on the line that's given to us in the constructor. So we can say point on line 1 is equal to that. And point on line 2 can be anywhere on the line, so we'll just say it's equal to point on line plus new vector 2, 1, comma, gradient. All right. So now that we have our two points, we can fill in the get side method. So let me write this all out quickly. We'll be returning true if point.x minus point1.x multiplied by point2.y minus point1.y is greater than point.y minus point1.y multiplied by point2.x minus point1.x. Okay, now, unless you've seen something like this before, this probably doesn't make a tremendous amount of sense. To avoid getting too sidetracked, however, I'm going to be explaining the mathematics behind this line of code in a standalone episode. So if you want to see how this is derived, then feel free to go watch that. For now, however, we're going to create a public bool called has crossed line given some point uh, p. And what we're going to do is we're going to see if this point is on the other side of the line from the perpendicular point that we are given in the constructor. So let's create a bool up here. I'm going to call this the approach side. And approach side is going to be equal to get side given the point perpendicular to the line. So the idea is that when we're creating this turn boundary, we use the previous point in the path as the point perpendicular to the line. So that's the side from which the unit will be approaching the line. And then once the unit has crossed over the line, then get side of the unit's current position will no longer be equal to the approach side. So we simply return that. All right, now if we save this and go into Unity, so we've actually got a error message here. And this is because our line struct needs to have all of these fields assigned to before we can call a method from the constructor. Now, the only field that hasn't been assigned to at this point is actually the approach side variable itself. So funnily enough, before we can assign uh, the get side result to it, we have to just give it a starting value, so I'll just make it false. If we save that now and go into Unity, the error disappears. And we can now go ahead and create a new C-sharp script, which I'll call path, and open that up. That is not going to inherit from mono behavior. All right, it's just going to have three variables, a public read-only vector3 array called look points a public read-only line array called turn boundaries, and a public read-only integer called the finish line index. All right, we're now going to want a constructor, so public path. This will take in a vector3 array for the waypoints, a vector 3 for the start position. If you recall, we leave out the unit starting position in the waypoints array. And finally, a float defining the turn distance. All right. So look points is simply a rebranding of waypoints. It's the same thing. 
and then turn boundaries will set equal to a new line array with length look points dot length and the finish line is just the last turn boundary in the turn boundaries array so the index is equal to turn boundaries dot length minus one all right since our line struct works with vector twos we're going to need to do a bunch of uh, converting from vector three to vector two but just casting normally will use the x and y coordinates from the vector three and uh, in our case, we're going to want to use the x and z coordinates. So I'm just going to make a little convenience method here, returning a vector 2. I'll call this vector 3, 2 vector 2. This will take in a vector 3, and it will return a new vector 2, v3.x and v3.z. All right, we're now going to say vector 2 previous point is equal to vector 3 to vector 2 of the start position and now we're going to loop through all of our look points so for int i equals 0 i less than look points dot length and incrementing i by 1 each time we'll have vector 2 current point is equal to vector 3 to vector 2 of look points i vector 2 direction to current point is equal to current point minus previous point dot normalized and vector 2 turn boundary point is equal to the current point minus the direction to the current point multiplied by the turn distance. All right, we can now say turn boundaries with an index of i is equal to a new line. And we need to pass in point on line and point perpendicular to line. So the point on the line is the turn boundary point, And the point perpendicular to the line is simply the previous point. However, what if the uh, turn distance is greater than the distance between the previous point and the current point. Well, in that case, the previous point will be on the wrong side of the turn boundary, and so our whole has crossed line method will not work. So, to ensure that doesn't happen, we'll take the previous point and we'll just subtract direction to current point multiplied by the turn distance. Okay. We then just need to say previous point is equal to the turn boundary point. Now, one small thing, remember that the last point in the turn boundaries array is the finish line, and so we don't want to subtract uh, turn distance from that. So what we'll do is we'll say, if the current index i is equal to the finish line index, then we'll set the turn boundary point simply equal to the current point. Otherwise, we'll set it to the current point uh, minus all of this. Before we go any further, it would be nice to have a way of visualizing the path to make sure everything's working correctly. So let's create a public void. I'll call this draw with gizmos. And this can start by saying gizmos.color is equal to color.black. And then we'll loop through all of our look points. So for each vector 3 p in look points. And we can maybe just draw a cube. So gizmos.drawcube. The center will be p. And we want to raise it a little bit above the ground. So plus vector 3 dot up. And for the size, we can just set that equal to vector 3 dot 1. Then we also want to draw the turn boundaries. So I'll start by saying gizmos.color is equal to something else, say color.white perhaps. And then we're going to want to loop through all of these. So for each line L in turn boundaries, we're going to say L dot draw with gizmos, which is a method we're of course going to create. And we can pass in the length of the line, say maybe 10. All right, let's save that and go into the line uh, struct. 
and create public void, draw with gizmos, taking in a float length. So let's start off by creating vector3 line direction. This will be equal to a new vector3. Uh, the x coordinate will be 1, the y coordinate will be 0, and the z coordinate will be the gradient. And then we'll normalize this. We're then going to create a vector3 line center, which is going to be a 3D version of our point on line 1. So new vector 3, point on line 1 dot x, 0 for the y axis, and then point on line 1 dot y for the z axis. Then we can say gizmos dot draw line from line center minus line direction times length over 2 to line center plus line direction times length over 2. All right. We should probably also add vector3.up to the line center, just so that the lines all appear above ground level. Let's save that and go into Unity. And let's now go into the unit script. In here, I'm going to start by making the speed variable public. And let's also make a public float turn distance. Which we'll set to 5 by default. We're going to be changing how follow path works. So let's delete everything in there for now. You can just keep the while loop. And we'll delete the target index variable as well as the vector3 array that defined our old path. Instead, path will be stored in the path class we created, of course. So let's create a path variable. And in the onPathFound method, let's just clarify that the new path variable is actually just an array of waypoints. And we'll set path equal to new path, giving it our waypoints, our start position, which is just transform.position, and the turn distance that we defined earlier. All right, don't want to set target index to zero anymore. And in onDrawGizmos, we can delete all of this stuff and replace it with path dot draw with gizmos. All right, let us save that. And now in Unity, if we press play, we should see all of our look points preceded by their associated turn boundaries. And at the end here, we can see our finish line. So just to be clear, this line over here is the turn boundary which belongs to this second last waypoint, and then the one behind that belongs to this one, and so on. All right, so that is the majority of our setup work done. In the next episode, we'll actually get the unit smoothly following the path. So until then, cheers.